I'm going to start with you for this one, Ben. We're two races in. Red Bull has a big lead over everyone, almost double the points. Which team do you feel is closest to claiming second place in the constructor standings? Uh, Matthew, Jonathan, Kobe. Um, I think it's Aston Martin. I think it's Aston Martin. I, and, you know, I, I got to eat crow. I know I ate crow two weeks ago. Um, this was no fluke. Uh, Fernando Alonso finally got lucky and changed teams at the right place at the right time. It's working out for him. Um, I think Aston Martin are far and away the best of the rest after Red Bull, who are clearly so far ahead of everybody else. Um, it, it's been remarkable to me, the turnaround that they've made over the last couple of years. And now to have Alonso coming in, obviously a two-time world champion, somebody who's been desperate for a good car over the last several years in Formula One, just hasn't been able to be in the right place at the right time until right now. I would not put a win past Fernando Alonso the way he's driving. He is looking absolutely spectacular. As far as I'm concerned, that's the third best car on the grid right now behind Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez, the second best car, I guess I should say, Alonso being the third best driver. Um, you know, he, he is just on a whole nother level right now. It looks like a Fernando Alonso of 10 years ago. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's just been spectacular and it's great to see a name like Alonso, a, an absolute legend of the sport back where he belongs fighting for podiums. I know we're going to get a little bit into that uh, discussion here a little bit later on as to the podium that he had and then didn't have and then had again, but my goodness, Aston Martin just are, are on a whole nother level this year compared to where they've been recently. Uh, Mercedes, I think, are a little bit better than a lot of people were expecting them to be uh, this weekend. I think they're solidly third place right now. We got to talk about Ferrari, though. Where were Ferrari this weekend? I mean, sixth and seventh, they were just absolute no-shows. And I think, you know, changing team principles has not been an overnight fix for that team. They clearly have a lot of issues that they still need to work out. I see Adam Lemery says he he's feeling the same way. Aston Martin strong, Alonso with 100 podiums. And, uh, of course, Demas Max Verstappen coming from 15th. He nearly got me a pick a winner point today anyway. I mean, he, he's the class of the field right now. There's no doubt. But after the Red Bulls, I, I, I owe Fernando Alonso and Aston Martin a massive apology for what I said at the end of last year. They have been spectacular, and they deserve all the credit in the world for that. Yeah, I, I think that's very true you know that aston martin's really improved and i was thinking at the end of the race you know sebastian vettel has to be punching the air right now with how good fernando alonso is doing out there and uh lance stroll also doing well but also i I don't think you can underestimate mercedes in the way that they are george russell is a phenomenal talent lewis hamilton is lewis hamilton and i i think that once they start to get things figured out and get more consistent, I, I think they're going to really be ahead of Aston Martin, what they're doing. But also, too, I think Ferrari needs some time to work out some of the bugs that they have going on because they show good speed in the first week. This week, they weren't there quite as much. So I'm just impressed with what Aston Martin's doing, though. Yeah, totally, Jonathan. I'm also impressed with Aston Martin. T- to see a team, you know, looking at where they were running 2022 and make the big jump, that they made this year, that is absolutely remarkable. Typically, we see Formula One teams make a little progress from season to season, but to make such a big jump where you're where you're literally, you know, the next best team behind Red Bull, that is super, super impressive. And it's unfortunate, you know, Lance Stroll wasn't, wasn't able to have the day that he wanted today because Lance was looking really, really, really strong, just like Fernando Alonso. And if Lance Stroll hadn't retired from the race, you know, it would have been a very, very good points day. For, for Aston. I think they, they have a lot to be proud of, and it's going to be fun watching to see how that team does throughout the, the, rem- the remainder of the season. And and if R- Red Bull, Max, and Checo have a bad day, it would not surprise me if we're going to see if we see Fernando Alonso return to the top step of the podium for the first time in a very, very long time, or even see Lance Stroll win a race in Formula One. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I think i was reading on twitter this is alonzo's first season with the podium since like 2014 or something or back to back since like 20 first with two podiums i think That's oh yeah sorry yes yeah. first with he, two podiums. he did get the one in qatar in qatar with uh with alpine in 21 and what i'm gonna segue into that is uh ben and i have been sharing some crow about our comments about s and martin this season i remember saying alonzo's gonna hit the 100 podiums but it's not gonna it's gonna be over the course of the season he did it in two races so unfortunately i have to eat there but at the same time, uh, in terms of claiming second place, I want to. I, w- I kind of agree with Jonathan in the sense where I feel like Mercedes we're treating them like they're where Alphatari and McLaren are, with no points. But in reality, Mercedes is tied for second with Aston Martin. I mean, 
I think what is going to be that deciphering battle is the overall talent and experience. More so the talent and the sides. I mean, Fernando Alonso, one of the best to ever do it. Compared Lewis Hamilton, one of the best to ever do it. George Russell, young, upcoming. Lance Stroll, also young and upcoming. However, I feel like Russell has the edge over Stroll, which I think over the course of a season might put Mercedes in second in constructors. But then again, you have Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz with Ferrari, two drivers who can easily put that team up as soon as they figure their issues out. I mean, they're, I believe, 28 points we saw, 26, 28 points. And then both Aston Martin and Mercedes at 38. So I think it's going to be a fun battle for a second. It really is.